Okay, welcome everyone. My name is Abby Love and I'm SCALE's Senior Specialist for Program Quality and Capacity Strengthening. Next slide. Before we begin, we want to make sure that everyone knows the French interpretation is available for this webinar. If you would like to follow along uh, with the event in French, please click on the small globe at the bottom of your Zoom screen where it says interpretation and then select your preferred language. Once you've selected your language, you can choose to mute the original audio or you can hear it in the background at a lower volume. If you have any technical issues during the session, please send a message to Suzanne or to Ashton and they will do their best to assist you. Please note that if you have any questions for the panelists today, we would like you to post your question in the chat box, which you can find at the bottom of your screen. Next slide. As many of you know, SCALE is designed to support research, capacity strengthening, and knowledge sharing for partners of USAID's Bureau for Humanitarian Assistance, or BHA. And our aim is really in order to strengthen the, the impact, sustainability, and scalability of agriculture, NRM, uh, natural resource management, and on-farm and off-farm livelihood activities in both emergency and non-emergency contexts. And the reason we're here today is that we are in our last month of implementation. So the, this round of scale is closing at the end of November, and we're having three culminating workshops or, or culminating events to share some of the things that we learned, some of the resources that we produced, and to make sure that you know where you can find those. Uh, and so we have this event today, we have one right after this, started focused on markets and livelihoods, and then we have our last one next week focused on resilient agriculture. And we'll make sure you know about those other two events um, by the end of this session. Next slide. I'm joined by some great presenters today. We have Wilfred Ogo, who is our um, program advisor for SCALE and ISSD Africa, focused on seed systems. We have Sadu Suma. He is a technical advisor with International Rescue Committee. Louise Sperling, who's the research director for seed systems. And then I'm wondering if Stephen Walsh from BHA made it. So I'm going to give him a second and see if he comes off mute. He is at the FAO event, so may not have been able to get away from his other activity. Okay, he is not here, so we will continue on. I was going to pass it over to him to give our brief introduction, um, but I'll do that instead after our agenda. So first we'll hear remarks from me in lieu of USA. Then we'll have um, this, Wilfred will talk about our seed system assessment consultation and the seeds learning group. We'll hear from Sadhu, who was a part of the Seeds Learning Group and his participant reflections. I'll talk a little bit about some case studies we did on last mile seed production and distribution. And then we'll hear it from Luis, who will talk about some uh, two tools that we did in partnership with ISSD Africa and Seed System. And we'll talk a little bit about our next step ahead of um, our, the, the follow on award for scale. And throughout this presentation, please keep your eye open for two um, icons so you'll see throughout the presentation. One is a star, and that is any resource that you're able to access after this webinar. So whether it be a document, a tool, a recording, you're able to go and find those after at, on the FSN network. And we'll make sure you know exactly where to find it. And then there's also a lightning bolt, which are different learnings that we've had over the, the life of scale related to seed systems. So we'll also be pulling your eye to those throughout the session. All right, next slide, Suzanne. Next slide. So this is uh, going to be from Steve, but I'll just share a few of the points that he wanted to make sure you guys heard. Next slide. So uh, Steve has mentioned on a few different occasions that in Fiscal year 21 alone, BHA had 185 agriculture applications, which is a lot of agriculture applications, totaling 
$234 million that have a seed or seedling component. So it's a lot of money and a lot of um, yeah, seeds and seedlings going through the, the BHA um, machine. And so we are, BHA is one of the largest donors globally in emergency seed aid. And there is the requirement or the, the expectation that um, BHA partners do a seed assessment if there is a seed, a seed intervention being done in the same geography for three consecutive seasons. Um, but there's the recognition that that's not always being done. And so with that being the case, um, there's yeah, not always effective seed interventions or the, the applications that are coming forward in that 185 agricultural applications, they're not always having very infor well informed um, seed components. And seed aid around the globe is increasing. And for close to two decades, BHA has supported emergency seed system assessments, so the SSSAs, and the more recently rapid RSSAs or um, under S34G or the, the CRS led program. And then next slide, Suzanne. Um, you know, SCALE in the last few years has also started working on um, seed-related activities because recognizing that a lot of the emergency and non-emergency partners are doing seed-related activities of some kind. And so um, we felt like, you know, in response to partners and in response to BHA, um, we wanted to provide support to partners. Um, so that's what today is about, to really share what some of those activities have been and then, uh, you know, BHA also wanted to mention, like, we, they hope this is an area that, that um, SCALE or the follow-on award continues to support uh, because it is such a, a huge component of the agriculture program for, for BHA funding. So with that, um, apologies, that was not coming out of Steve's mouth, but hopefully uh, you got his points anyways. And with that, I will um, pass it over to Wilfred, who will talk a little bit about our SSSA consultations. Yes, thanks a lot, Abby. And um, of course, just building on the importance of sea systems assessment, um, uh, scale uh, hosted consultations on sea systems assessments, uh, which were informed by the existence of chronic seed programming issues among BHA funded programs. Uh, these include assumptions about extent of seed needs and also uh, the use of direct seed distribution respective of the nature of uh, seed security uh, problem. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so uh, the consultations were basically um, um, organized for uh, implementing partners, but also uh, BHA technical staff. Uh, with uh, the aim of better understanding, of course, the variation in uptake and use of C systems assessments across those uh, programs. Next slide. And out of these um, consultations, of course, the key findings um, had to do with the uh, most uh, BHA programs failing to um, articulate um, seed uh, systems assessments uh, uh, components within the applications, but also uh, that uh, whereas we have um, a pool of um, C systems assessment reports done globally, and these are available online, uh, of course, they are not widely uh, accessed by implementers. And so um, other than that, of course, there was that limited expertise which compromised on uh, the use of the existing uh, C systems assessment resources uh, by organizations, but also generally uh, there was um, a lack of awareness about um, uh, the resources and, and research related to analysis of C systems assessment uh, data. Next uh, slide, please. And so um, out of this, we came out with uh, some of the key recommendations and um, uh, the two key ones uh, had to do with supporting more socialization on these resources, uh, the tools, uh, the uh, C systems reports, 
and, and also uh, basically building around um, um, co-creation of additional trainings uh, where needed, but also some support to help partners be able to uh, access and uh, navigate and also use uh, these tools uh, and, and also generally the, the resources, including the uh, e-learning uh, materials that are valuable um, um, uh, online. Uh, but uh, also we needed to um, clarify the guidelines that um, uh, underpin the expectations uh, for C-Systems assessments by BHA. Um, and of course, uh, one of the things that uh, Abby mentioned is uh, the expectation uh, that um, any intervention done consecutively uh, uh, th for three uh, seasons uh, should uh, attract um, uh, an assessment uh, with it. Uh, next slide, please. And so out of these uh, uh, two recommendations, then we um, opted to uh, establish a seeds learning group. Um, and, and, and this was basically to respond to some uh, of the findings uh, that uh, we, um, we had. Next slide, please. And so the CS Learning Group was basically a four week uh, a program uh, that had uh, one session every week. Uh, we had um, a total of 18 implementing partners from 12 organizations. And of course we had BS, BHA participating uh, in the uh, CIS Learning Group. And uh, this was uh, basically um, organized and um, run by uh, SCALE uh, in collaboration with the SEED system. And um, our aim, of course, was to um, help uh, implementing partners be able to have a solid understanding of not only the general SEED systems uh, concepts, but also uh, the C systems assessments and uh, basically how to uh, get access to some of the uh, SSSA tools and uh, trainings, like I mentioned, the e learning training and so on. And also to uh, uh, bring to fore um, some of the common pitfalls that uh, the sort of uh, organizations run into and to help to brainstorm on how to avoid these pitfalls. Um, but also to help partners to have a clear understanding of uh, what uh, the B, uh, BHA uh, really expects insofar as uh, uh, seed uh, systems assessments are concerned. Next slide, please. So um, this is uh, sort of just a depiction of the entire journey of the CIS learning group, uh, starting all the way from understanding uh, those very basic um, CIS systems concepts, running through uh, some content uh, in detail about uh, CIS systems assessments, including uh, CIS system security assessments, but also pointing out the common pitfalls and uh, sort of uh, highlighting the minimum standards that uh, would guide seed intervention, design of seed intervention, and also thinking about how do we plan for um, a seed systems uh, assessment. Next slide, please. And so uh, if you'd like to um, sort of uh, get a glimpse of this, all the sessions, uh, they are all on the uh, food, and, food security and nutrition network website and you can also watch the sessions live on YouTube and of course you'll be able to uh, find the entire uh, information uh, that came out of the sessions. Um, next slide please. So here I just want to um, give an example of one of the exercises that we went through with the entire group and uh, this was about understanding the basic concepts of seed systems. And this is basically what is seed, uh, for instance. So um, with this, I would uh, like to ask Suzanne to show us the photos. And uh, I would like everybody to look at the photos and give your answer in the chat. If you agree this is seed or if you don't agree, uh, just say yes or no. 
uh, and then we'll sort of uh, capture your info. So we'll go through the three photos and then Suzanne, you'll go back to the first photos so that people are able to, uh, to like um, connect. So you'll simply type your answer in the chat for photo one. I uh, think we go back to the first, all right? So uh, everyone, please just go ahead, type your answer in the chat if it's uh, a yes or a no, and then we'll just take a minute to run through um, um, the, the responses as quickly as we can. So for photo one, I see um, yes, uh, yes, all through. Uh, let's move to um, photo two. Right. Yeah, I can see uh, yes, uh, yes and no. Um, um, I see a no, and of course, two possible as a response. Uh, photo three. Let's just take um, a few seconds to go through that. Um, yeah, I can see emphatic uh, no um for photo three um so you be, you begin to get a sense of um what the training was like and um, and of course uh we had um, more time for for this exercise and more of course pictures and we were able to get um uh in detail uh, some detailed uh, uh discussion around this why this is seed why this is not but just to mention like for, if you look at uh, photo one, uh, it is seed, uh, there is a clear uh, description, packaging, uh, well-placed uh, and so on. So you're able to sort of uh, recognize what is being sold there. For photo two, uh, this is basically a traditional way of uh, uh, saving seed on the cob. And this should be South Sudan. Uh, photo three, um, um, I, I'm sure you can see um, um, some rotten, see, rotten uh, material in there. And this does not give a, a, a great picture of what a seed looks like. And so um, that is one of the exercises that we went through. And um, next slide, please. Uh, that is after the third photo. Uh, next slide, please. And so um, out of this, we, uh, we were able to sort of glean some of the, of the lessons uh, for the entire SEEDS learning group in terms of uh, the application process, uh, the participant vetting. Uh, just to mention, we had an upwards of 80 um, 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 people expressing interests in uh, the SEEDS learning group. And, we had to uh, vet and come down to 20 who uh, finally participated in uh, the learning group. Uh, we had a, quite a rigorous process of selection. And of course, one of the conditions was to get buy-in from the supervisors. And we were able to um, sort of like uh, adapt our um, uh, training model or learning model uh, based on information or feedback from every other session, which helped us to sort of be able to sync uh, the uh, learning to the needs of the participants. Uh, but of importance was in, in the immediate applicability of uh, the learning content. content. And um, one uh, concern is um, even after the, uh, the, the, the end of the uh, last session of the learning group, uh, quite a number of partners still indicated that they were not uh, planning to do um, uh, any seed uh, system assessment. And so I think that is something that we really uh, need to think about um, um, in the coming uh, sort of uh, scale phase, if uh, that can be explored further. Uh, at this point, now I want to invite Sadhu. Sadhu is one of the participants uh, uh, who uh, sort of went through the SIS learning group. 
and I would like him to uh, sort of give us uh, his perspective uh, of uh, what he came out with um, um, of, out of the uh, CIS learning group. So, uh, Sadu, welcome, please. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, well, Fred. Uh, yeah, I have had the opportunity to join the learning group uh, different session and uh, uh, where we have been exposed to different resources, guidelines, and also tools uh, that are very uh, adapted to different contexts for seed security assessments. And also we have been taken through the different standard of seed security uh, assessment. And also we have had a good, a good presentation from you USID on the portfolio of see, uh, how we are conducting our seed uh, ed on the on the ground, which give us uh, gave us a broad view of how we are implementing the different approaches and also the common mistake we are uh, uh, committing on uh, on, the, on the ground. So following also uh, my participation to this learning, we have had the opportunity at IRC level to conduct seed security assessments in Burundi and also one also in, uh, in Somalia. For Burundi one, I think that's uh, my participation in this, uh, in the learning sessions uh, help more uh, to adapt the seed security uh, standard all over the process. I remember during the, 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 uh, the process, uh, we are questioning why, what is the rationale behind uh, conducting seed security assessment so it, it took a lot of time to reflect on it, but the most important to see how it can be more relevant. So we have to agree, yeah, it, it is going to be used uh, to inform our value chain activities that we are going to develop. And also it's going to use, uh, the information are going to be used uh, uh, for our common program that we are going to develop around uh, seed ed in the context that uh, seed ed is coming becoming more pronounced. There are a lot of intervention, but uh, still be the same activities are being run. We would like to bring change in what we are doing. And also it helps us uh, to be a position for uh, food security opportunities from uh, uh, European Union that was, uh, uh, that came out uh, in the month of uh, uh, October in, for uh, Burundi uh, context. Another element also that was very useful in the standard is most importantly, uh, the background. We did the, uh, the seed security assessment through a consultation. And yeah, we have a large number of consultants that have very background, good background, but we try to dig more what, to, what will be the real background of those uh, consultants, the background in terms of the crop, seasonality, the cropping system, information about the area, geographical area, and so on so far. So uh, it was very helpful for us uh, to figure out the consultant that was uh, equipped to do uh, the, the seed security assessment for the context. And also uh, one of the standards, which is uh, the, the geographical limitation also helped us because initially we were saying that we are going to conduct the seed security assessment over five regions. So yeah, the, uh, reflecting on that uh, uh, element of the standard help us to narrow it to a very specific geographical area uh, that has uh, the same agroecological uh, agro uh, uh, information aspect and also where uh, the seed security uh, uh, system within that system, uh, actors and everyone uh, involving in one way or another are well uh, identified and also uh, it help us, uh, uh, that can help also to take decision uh, in our programming uh, in, on which actor or which actor we are going to work with and so on and so forth. So uh, it was very, very useful for us uh, to use uh, those standards in uh, the seed security assessments we did in, uh, in Burundi in the month of uh, uh, September and October. Another element also to be flagged here also after we joined this, uh, uh, this uh, session also, uh, we've conducted rapid seed security assessment in Somalia. There we use most importantly the S3 for the uh, seed uh, rapid seed security assessment tool. So yeah, the, 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 the tool was well, uh, well adapted to the context and also it helped us to get out most information about the seed security system and also help us to, uh, to tailor our seed intervention uh, most imp uh, importantly uh, in the BIDAR uh, uh, region so, uh, uh, in, 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 in Somalia. So uh, yeah, yeah I, I can say that the learning uh, process was very interactive, uh, very uh, knowledgeable again, and also 
yeah, there was engagement that has been committed and also we are going to keep our team whenever we have conducted a, a seed security assessment in every corner of the world, we are going to share and we see opportunity how we can build up on the knowledge that we have get. These are some few elements I would like to share with you uh, as a team joining this uh, session. Over to you. Thank you so much, Sadhu and Wilfred. I really appreciate your, your reflections on both the SSS, SSA consultation series as well as the Seeds Learning Group. And Steve, I know you were able to join us. I, did you want, are you still here? And then did you want to say anything? Um, or if you popped off again, that's totally fine. Okay. No worries. Um, I'm going to switch gears a little bit. We Another product we did was on a, a series of case studies on models for strengthening last mile seed production and distribution in fragile states. And this we did in collaboration with Integrated Seed Sector Development in Africa or ISSD Africa. And next slide, please. And we did this because there really weren't that many um, cases documented in fragile states really getting into last mile um, approaches. And so we did a call for case studies early to mid last year and got over 20 applications um, for different, uh, from different contexts all over Africa and ended up selecting cases from Burundi, Mozambique, Niger, and South Sudan. Actually, Sadu was one of the cases um, for, for that as well. And each, in the, the case study document, there are the four individual case studies. And then we summarize some lessons learned across um, all four of them. And one of the interesting things that we found from these different cases is that there's an interesting, um, even though these are fragile, sometimes conflict affected areas, the, a lot of the lessons learned are really similar to stable environments as well. So for example, focusing on market-based approaches, creating partnership between local market actors, like those are how we would approach um, stable environments as well. Coupling seed access with social and behavior change approaches and understanding farmer seed preferences. Those are also things that we would be, um, you know, that Im implementation approaches that would be taken or private sector approaches that would be taken in um, stable and fragile environments. So we're hoping this is just the start of, of capturing some of these um, cases and that we can continue doing so going forward. Uh, next slide, Suzanne. You can see here, they were documented in both French and English, and they're on the FSN network as well. And there was a webinar where the, uh, the case study authors got to present their cases and talk a little bit more about their approaches. So if you'd like to, to learn about those as well, they're on the FSN network also. And now I will pass it over to Luis, who will talk um, a little bit more about seed assistance in emergency and conflict settings. Luis, over to you. Yes, hello everyone. I'm just doing the last presentation um, before we have a, a Q&A. Seed assistance in emergency and conflict settings. Oh, I'm trying to start my video. Ah, uh, there I am. You can all see me. I think I'm going to, next please, I'm going to stop it to uh, save bandwidth. So this is part of SCALE's collaborative activity. Next. And to say is highly collaborative. Very glad to see ISSD also on this call. Okay, so why are we looking at seed in conflict and emergency settings? As, as Abby mentioned and Steve Walsh has mentioned, there's rising seed aid, there's repetitive seed aid. Um, we see very much that this is creating farmer dependency, um, even damaging seed enterprise. Also, as all of you know, increasingly, we're doing aid in conflict settings. So clearly, there's a need for practical tools to guide response options. Next, please. Okay, two, we want to signal that just are off the press. What do we call CERT, Seed Emergency Response Toolkit, CERT? The other we call CAT, conflict, uh, Context Analysis Tool. And this is particularly for seed systems in conflict-affected areas. Next. 
Both of these were developed in a highly collaborative manner. It was Mercy Corps, it was ISSD Africa with seed system, but also with strong input from donors and implementers, particularly USAID. The audience is policymakers, program managers, field staff, etc. So it's not just field staff, although these are practical guides, it's also very much geared to decision makers. The aim is clear, provide guidance on seed security interventions in emergency, in conflict, and amazingly, they're now both in French and in English. Next, please. To give you a flavor, I'm just gonna give a glimpse of the CERT first. Again, it's the Seed Emergency Response Toolkit. Next. Okay, so the CERT um, describes and builds on all the seed systems that farmers use. Formal, informal, intermediate, all are important in emergency, in conflict and stress. Next. The CERT emphasizes that seed programs can have different goals. So you might have a goal of food security or nutrition, resilience, income, you have to gear the seed security program towards the goal. And the CERT particularly emphasized resilience and there's a very detailed resilience section. Next, please. What we're learning is that there really are a range of seed security response interventions. Look at the dark gray bars. Many of us do direct seed distribution, so we give seed. But equally, and becoming more prominent, uh, increasingly prominent, are market-based approaches. And these might be market-based approaches focusing on clients, so cash, vouchers, seed fairs. But they could also be market-based approaches supporting the supply side. So helping agro-dealers, helping traders get seed into stress areas. Next. The CERT particularly emphasizes market-based approaches, both support to informal markets, as well as to the formal ones. Next. We do have fairly elaborate decision trees for the expert, but also for the layperson. Step-by-step -step decision trees. So for instance, if you look at the pink, you've identified a constraint of seed access. You have a range of options. You might do cash. If you look at the vertical column, you might do vouchers. You might do seed vouchers and fares. You might do direct distribution. How do you decide? We help you decide. Next. The core of the CERT is these 10 guiding principles for better seed relief. We think these are incredibly important for the humanitarian community, and if they're adopted, could really change international practice. So if you look at the 10, and we've just listed the themes, they go from one assessment, then response type, goal, we give guidance on all of these, all the way through feedback. Each of these 10 steps, these core guiding principles have a gender integration, gender lens, gender theme, meaning that it's not separate, it's integrated. Next. Just to give you a flavor of one of these principles and the level of technical detail. This is principle number seven, crop and variety choice. What it says is the crops and varieties selected for the intervention should suit the context and user need. Makes sense. What does that mean? Well, we give eight technical notes. You know, the first, so the seed and the intervention goal have to match. If you're going to resilience, get crops for resilience. Look at C and D. Crop and variety preferences not only have to be adopted, they have to meet gender and market preferences, even during an emergency. Number E, no matter what, whatever you give, has to be usable under realistic management conditions. So they're very centered and very detailed. Okay, these guiding principles. 
Next. So before we, we end on CERT, um, we have a question for you. Do you think guiding principles for seed aid are important for the global community to follow? Yes? No? Thanks very much, Susanna, for putting this up. Susanna, are you going to share the tally? Are we there yet? Okay, so we got some a very strong yes. Um, someone said no, and we'd be interested to hear from you during the discussion. But please know that we are going to try to promote these global principles through the FAO, through the um, Food Security Cluster, through the AU, you know, really just to, just to boost all of our practice. I'm going to close. Okay, next, please. Okay, just for the cert to some, know that it isn't a response tool toolkit. Um, it has seed system fundamentals. It has a chart on all the types of seed responses, decision trees, and best practices. Next. Okay, I'm quickly going to go to the CAT, the context analysis tool. All the lessons that came from the cert are relevant, but in addition, we delve into seed systems and conflict. And we think this is the first time this has happened. Next, please. Two concepts are key to the CAT. One is conflict sensitivity, and many of you know this, you know, to aim to ensure that a program minimizes any negative effects, be conflict sensitive. A new one is conflict savvy, which refers to a set of skills that someone might have that allows them to navigate in a dangerous area. You know, so this might be a conflict savvy trader who tells us where the landmines are, landmines, sorry, next. The uh, next please, yeah, the, the cat does try to look at seed systems from a conflict perspective and which features might change. So the length of the stability period, look at the left, the theft, uh, risk of displacement. And then we also have cases that show this. So if you look at the right, in North Kivu, farmers are planting crops earlier so as not to coincide with rebel attacks. You look at down the, down the run northern Uganda, the military controlled the height of field plants, uh, cassava being one, so that rebel fighters could not easily hide. So we're very evidence-based. Next, please. The cat is very processual, step by step. Section one characterizes the conflicts. Section two looks at the context in a detailed, descriptive way, but then moves forward to action and gives practical tools to do this. Next. To give an example of the conflict lens, um, you might ask general questions. Have the land arrangements changed? Have the labor or cooperative arrangements changed? Next. I'm just about done, Evie. Next. Um, crop specific issues, have the type of plants changed? Have the types of varieties changed? Next. We do have decision trees. In this case, um, we even ask, can the seed system intervention be tied to peace building efforts? Something totally new. Next. And then we have cases. Cases grounded in evidence are really important to us. And we have eight of them. We'd love to hear from you on more. Next. And this is just about the final slide. Just to give you an idea of a substantive case, um, this has to do with Sierra Leone. A peace days were held to open and debate. These peace days were linked to DSD, direct seed distribution. What they decided in the end was to give smaller amounts of seed, but to many people, because targeting seed aid was creating divisions. Next. 
I'm going to end here. Abby wants to move forward. But just to say on the last point is that we found that you need a conscious tailoring of approaches in conflict situations with SEED. Old models don't necessarily work. Thank you. Moving forward, we do welcome your feedback. The feedback, next please, the feedback on the CAT and on the CERT. Um, they're really documents in progress. Thank you. Abby, over to you. Thanks, Louise. And I was not at all trying to rush you, just reminding our um, audience that they are welcome to ask any questions. And I think, uh, actually, Suzanne, let's take off the presentation, and then I'll ask Luis and Sadhu and Wilfred to come on video if their video supports it, or if their bandwidth supports it. And yeah, we just want to, to give about 10 minutes for Q&A with the, with the group here. Um, I know we have a number of people on the line who may have been to one of our um, presentations earlier in the year, or this might be the first time they're hearing about some of these resources. So we wanted to hold a space for people to ask any questions. You can come off mute if you like, if you have a question to ask. Um, but I'm curious, I'll, I'll get us started since we don't have any in the, the chat box just yet. Um, but I am curious, you know, Luis, Sadhu, Wilfred, you guys are coming from different parts of the food security community. Sadhu, you're a direct implementer. Luis, you've been an academic for years, a practitioner. Um, you've been, you've worn many hats over the years. Um, and then Wilfred, you're most recently working on these learning awards. Um, and I guess what I'm thinking about is, Scales role over the past few years, you know, we've had one, we've had a small role in the seed system world. Um, and as we're going into our next iteration of scale, I guess, where do you think our biggest value add is? Like what is, uh, yeah, I guess, what, what role do you feel like we should be playing in supporting implementing partners with better practice, but then also recognizing that we have some convening power, we have, um, yeah, we're good networkers. Um, yeah, I guess what role do you feel like we we should play going forward? Well, I don't mind starting, but I think it's the the implementers and the scale community particularly should um, should comment here. I, I've found it fascinating about how important scale is to help people on the ground share experiences. And you don't often find this type of open community that shares research results and shares tools, but is also very open about experiences. So keeping scale open and frank um, and at the cutting edge of what is working and what is not working would be really wonderful. Yeah, I want to just mention um, having been with scale um, and looking at the approach uh, to strengthening capacity agriculture in agriculture livelihoods and environment uh, i see a great opportunity uh, to make seeds prominent within uh, scales activity uh, because activities because uh, uh, seed and livelihoods of course cannot be separated um, if you want to do agriculture and strengthen people's capacities you have to think about seeds first um, and the way you, uh, the way we do it uh, at scale is we dig into issues um, together with those who are most affected, uh, whether they are the implementers or the uh, participants who are beneficiaries. In, uh, of course, uh, uh, those are semantics. Uh, but then I look at that niche as uh, being able to sort of. Um, uh, be strategic about how you approach uh, your strengthening capacity um, um, activities and, and being able to move this forward in a big way because there is um, uh, that uh, a starting point. We have started the seeds things 
And uh, the next level is how do we perhaps scale out the issue, uh, things like seeds learning group, how do you uh, sort of step up in terms of um, uh, supporting more socialization, uh, just building on the recommendation that we had that then informed the seed, la seed learning group. So uh, I think those are areas that are quite open. And uh, looking at uh, uh, one of the takeaways we had from the seed learning group that uh, many partners, uh, even after the uh, uh, seed learning group were not having immediate plans to do seed systems assessments. I think it's a good thing to like, uh, a more, I would say, uh, intentionally follow up on why why would this happen even after getting all the knowledge, uh, being introduced to the resources, being able to sort of relate to some of the existing C systems assessment reports. Uh, is is there anything that uh, uh, IPs need other than the SIS learning group? And how can we build on the SIS learning learning group to impact even more partners? Perhaps. Outside of VHA, I don't, I don't know if that's workable, but I think it's 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 going to be uh, sort of quite impactful um, uh, at, at at the implementers level. So uh, I think there are several open doors for mm -hmm. for scale to jump into and impact the the seed sector. Thanks, Wilfred. Sada, did you want to add anything? I see a few more questions have come in now. Yes, yes, yes. I have only uh, one point. I think that when you look about the context now, all these past uh, uh, two or three decades, uh, seed eggs uh, steadily increase. And uh, seed, we know it is the basis of the production. But I think that we have to think how we can work on uh, seed system, reinforcing the seed system, working most importantly on the market component that we think uh, we are uh, we know uh, in the developing country are uh, yet to be developed. So uh, by a scale to lay the foundation of try, uh, grouping people, training, and also collecting all these resources and put it together, I think that uh, they can also see how we can uh, extend coordination. We can, uh, they can support coordination from country level, from uh, sub-regional level or global level. So, but the necessity to coordinate to use uh, the existing resources and also to work to bring change, sustainable change is uh, is well uh, is will be well appreciated to bring uh, so that we can reduce uh, seed aid and work on market component and also maybe maybe even create job opportunity. We have uh, some learning that uh, uh, seed is also procuring a job for youth in some specific context. So. Yeah, a strong coordination among actors at a local level, regional level, or sub-regional level will be good, which uh, I think that scale uh, can work on that. Over to you. Thanks a lot, Sadhu, Luis, and Wilfred. I really appreciate your thoughts. Um, okay, this is a question from Ed Walters, and maybe to Luis. Um, is the recommendation to use all of the tools when considering an emergency speed response, so the CERT and the CAT? If so, is there some consideration for time and resource needs? Uh, should I answer? Good question, Ed. I think the 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 CAT, the context analysis tool in conflict areas, um, can easily be integrated with the CERT at at very little additional time and cost. It's more about themes. How do you work in a conflict savvy in a conflict sensitive way? But moving on to a related question about conflict, um, ultimately, I think it's from some Thomas. So Thomas, I don't know you. Um, working in conflict, we're finding you, we might need an additional way of working, and I say this, that the, the CAT also emphasizes very much remote. How do you work in a remote way when you can't go on the ground? Um, and in high conflict situations, my feeling um, is ultimately that we're going to need a tool in which two or three or four experts go in, and you might not have team-based assessments, just as it's so difficult to be on the ground. 
So looking at all the tools we've developed, S34D, seed system, scale, um, we've learned a great deal, but all of them might need to be further mod modified for high conflict settings. And that's why we're here. We're learners. Thanks, Louise. So hopefully Ed and Thomas both answered your questions. There are a few questions um, from Dick and from Dan related to markets. And I know Sadhu, this is something you touched on a little bit as well. So Dick's question was that over 90% of smallholder farmland is planted to market seed or re retain seed. What are you doing to assure the quality of market seed? Most national seed systems only have the capacity to provide a very small percentage of the annual seed needs. Abby, could I take that on? To sure. That? Yeah, sure. So Let's it's see. an absolutely superb question. And Dr. Tinsley is 100% right that we have to improve the quality and accept the quality and recognize the quality of market seed. One of the guiding principles of better practice of the 10 principles that we would like to promote is about seed quality. And what it basically says without taking too much time is that the quality of seed has to be meet uh, not just donor needs and implementer needs, but farmer needs. And that the quality is not about a label. <laughs> the quality is about process. And so what we're recommending is that the processes for obtaining and screening seed should be transparently described and that the quality should be objectively determined. And this would include, not exclude, market seed. So we're trying to open doors, but it's not easy. Thanks, Louise. And I just uh, recognizing that we're we're getting close to time. Um, Dan, I just want to note a few of your market related points. Um, it would be great to hear your voice. It's been so long, but um, just to note that the the seed emergency response tool has a number of tables and uh, decision trees that have market related information in there. We are trying to push the the seed aid to thinking more market oriented as much as we can. Um, so please take a look at that and we would love to hear your feedback. These are very much version ones of both the context analysis tool and the seed emergency response tool. So it'd be great to get your market eye on both of those, Dan. Um, we would really welcome your feedback on them. Uh, so I wanna give a huge round of applause to our presenters. Thank you so much for sharing your insights and your, your um, engagements with our tools over the last few years. And just in our last few minutes, um, Suzanne, can you bring the presentation back up? We do have, I, I want to remind you of a few things. Just after this presentation, we have our markets and livelihoods session. It is a different link. So you do have to go to a different Zoom link that Suzanne will put into the chat box in just a second. And then we wanted to hear from you for the resources that we've talked about today, which of them do you find most relevant to your work? Is it the seed emergency response tool, the context analysis tool, the case studies, the seeds learning group recordings, the SSSA consultation, all of the above? Um, it would be really great to hear what you feel like is most useful or if none of them are, that's also an appropriate answer if, that, if that's true to you. Because um, we, we do have the link where you can find all of the resources on the FSN network. And we hope that you will go and find the resources that are most relevant to you and pass them along to your colleagues and take time to watch the, the sessions or, or read the documents. We'll give it just another minute and then I'll we'll show you which ones are coming out on top. So far, it's looking at the seed emergency response tool and all of the above, which is great to see. Okay, Suzanne, you can go ahead and share the results. 
you see that nearly half of the respondents have the seed emergency response tool. And in there is where you can find the 10, princi 10 guiding principles. So definitely check that out. Uh, we're really excited about that tool and definitely welcome your feedback. And then I think the only other thing, Suzanne, is that we do have a brief um, survey just to get feedback on this webinar. If you have two minutes after this to fill it out, we really welcome your feedback. Um, but otherwise, we hope to see you on the market session in just a minute and to stay in touch. We really appreciate you. Thank you.